All right, we good? How's it going, everybody? It's Ark. Welcome aboard. Got another good one for you today. Today we have a little bit more APDL action. Uh, this week uh, is week four interconference play for the second week, um, and we're gonna take on Winglings and the Sunnyside Soul Rocks. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I feel pretty trashy right now. I've been sick for the last two days, so if my voice is suffering at any point, please just uh, bear with me a little bit. But uh, Winglings has a really solid team. He's three and zero on the season, top five ranked team. So uh, we got our work cut out for us. And without further ado, let's just go straight into the team builder. So um, this week uh, we're running some of the same stuff we did last week, but a, a few different things. Uh, first things first, we're going to lead with Choice Bandit Arcanine. Um, he's led Roserade, I think, every single week so far. And um, we have enough speed investment here, so unless he's Scarfed, uh, there's no way that Roserade could ever be faster than me. So Flare Bliss is just going to knock it out right away. Uh, we're also going to run Extreme Speed for Priority, Thunder Fang for a very annoying Vaporeon, which we'll talk a little bit about later. And uh, Facade, just in case uh, we get uh, Toxic Spiked or ran into something with status. So I think the Arcanine set was really, really solid. Next up, we're running the same Bronzong set that we did last week. Turns out that this Gyro Ball Trick Room Bronzong just kind of ruins a lot of people. Um, so we're just going to run Trick Room, Gyro Ball, EQ, Explosion kills a lot of stuff. i got to be very careful about throwing explosions off because um, Frost Lass is a thing, and I don't want to just toss an explosion into something random. So uh, once Frost Lass is gone, this gets a lot easier for me. Uh, so Bronzong has the potential to pop off a little bit here, but we'll see what happens. Then we have It's Ma'am, the Miss Magius. We're on a Choice Scarf. Just want to be faster than everything. We're looking for chip damage. Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, Psychic, and Destiny Bond to get rid of like a really good threat of his, I think would be really good. Um, Miss Magius is probably like the worst or like the second worst member on this team. Um, and its goal was basically just to go one and one, and I wasn't expecting anything better out of it than <laughs> than than that. So decent set nonetheless and has some good potential. Next up we have uh, Kick Me. The Electrode with Silk, Scarf, Explosion, Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, and Mirror Coat. Uh, Ampharos is kind of a wall to my Electrode, and Hidden Power isn't really doing a whole lot. Um, so I'm going to run Mirror Coat to kind of offset some of that special damage. And, you know, we're not choice, or we're not uh, Focus Ash for the first time this week. So uh, we're running Explosion with a Silk Scarf, uh, specifically for Ursary. Um, without the Silk Scarf, um, we would have to run like Life Orb or something for Explosion to kill with the investment that I have. Um, so the Silk Scarf is going to offset the Explosion damage and give me like some pretty meaningful damage, whatever I'm choosing to go boom on. Uh, the fifth Mon of the week, probably like my favorite set, honestly. We're going to go Keck W, the Kecleon with a Lumberry. Um, in hindsight, probably should have just gone Leftovers. Uh, color change, we're going Max Special Defensive Wall. Base 120 Special Defense is super solid. Uh, this is going to be my stealth rocker. I think rocks are like actually really important to me winning the game. Uh, we're going to run Toxic to help with things like Vaporeon, Dizzy Punch for a little bit of hacks, and then uh, Recover, obviously, just to kind of offset some stall action if we run into a stall war with the Vaporeon. And then last but not least, we're going to run a Leftovers, Rest, Sleep Talk, Iron Defense, Flash Cannon, and Polium. Taking a little bit of inspiration from the letter Kenny Lanterns and the Bastiodon from a week ago. Um, in the right situation, this thing can just basically make it really frustrating for him. Um, and Flash Cannon does like some pretty good damage against most of his team, uh, with the exception being like Ampharos and Vaporeon, which you'll see a trend. Those are kind of the two big threats that I'm worried about. But uh, nevertheless, uh, this was kind of the sixth member of the team. And honestly, Empoleon's been pretty lackluster. Uh, for the first four weeks here so uh, after this video we're gonna put them on the train market and see if anybody bites at it or we might be looking to make some changes for next week um, but for this week it's pretty decent uh, next up here we got our keys to the victory um, number one we've talked a little bit about it already uh, Vaporeon is a bit of a problem uh, the thing is super super tanky I think in testing like a max attack Jolly Tauros with a life orb return did like 33% to it. It was like pitiful damage. So um, depending on what Vaporeon it is will make my life a lot easier, a lot harder. But if this is like a max defensive, max HP wish, like toxic supporting Vaporeon, I think I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. So um, we have things like Electrode, uh, Thunderfang on Arcanine, and uh, Kecleon for the most part. That's why the Lumberry is there, so I can potentially win a 1v1 against it. 
Um, so we have to have answers to that. Second up is Threaten the Hazard Setters. Um, Frostlass and Roserade are his two big hazard setters, uh, which can throw spikes or toxic spikes. I believe that he probably has something on his team that throws out stealth rocks as well. And my team doesn't really appreciate any of those, and I don't have a spinner. So I need to play a while around like the hazard setters really, really carefully. Uh, that's part of the reason why we're going to go Arcanine right away, so we can kind of offset that toxic spikes damage. Um, the team also is kind of built to deal with like toxic spikes. Uh, Bronzong, Miss Magus, and Empoleon all are immune to poison. Um, and then uh, Kecleon with the Lumberry is also kind of a check to that. And then Facade on the Arcanine too can potentially lead to some pretty interesting things as well. So um, up third, we have the Kecleon chip damage. Uh, like I said before, the rocks are actually pretty important this week. A lot of the calcs that I ran throughout uh, testing and stuff yesterday, there was a lot of stuff doing like in the 80 to 90-ish percent range. So having that chip damage from the stealth rock could be really important. And if I can threaten out Vaporeon and kind of get that chip damage over time, I think it would be really, really decent. And uh, Kecleon is honestly like just good. The move pool is pretty insane on this thing. I have a lot of uh, different ideas that I can run in the next couple of weeks as well. But And then last but not least, we have Silk Scarf Electrode. Um, Electrode actually does incredibly well against his team. Um, we're able to tank hits from Ampharos and Mirror Coat to kill things. Uh, Thunderbolt can sometimes just kill Vaporeon if I have like enough chip damage. T-Wave cripples a lot of threats and Explosion just kills stuff. So uh, we need Electrode, ironically enough, to kind of pop off and be the team leader this week. So um, we're not going to lead it <clears throat> and we're not going to sash it. So we're bringing a, a bit of the like a similar moveset, but a different game plan with it. So that's the team for the week. Pretty happy with it overall for the most part. Without further ado, let's just pop on into the match. Make sure that I'm not blasting your eardrums as always. Um, so I'm going to lead Arcanine. He's going to go Roserade right away. I'm fully expecting a swap here, but I lose almost nothing from just going for a Flare Blitz right off the bat. If he stays in, it's really good for me. Even if he's sashed, I, I get a kill off if he wants to like Toxic Spike me. If he goes into Vaporeon, it's fine. I just go Kecleon. So I'm going to fire off a Flare Blitz, and he's actually just going to tank it. So he probably thought he was faster, but with our investment, we should be one point faster no matter what. Vaporeon comes out, I can't stand, and now it's time to go Kecleon. Surf comes in, does 33%, so right off the bat, I know that this thing has some special attack investment, which is good news for me, I think, for the most part. <clears throat> it makes the Arcanine matchup a little bit easier, but a little bit worse at the same time. Um, so he's either going to be like max defense or max HP. I'm guessing he's going to be like max HP, but... We're going to get some color change action going. This seems like a good opportunity just to go for a recover. Earthstring comes out. We find out that he's Guts or Quick Feet. I assume he's Guts. So um, right here I make... I don't want to say it's a risky play, but maybe not the best play in the world. I probably could have just gone like Arcanine, but I don't want to get EQ'd. Uh, even with like a burn in an Intimidate. But I mean the burn doesn't matter if he's Guts, right? So I'm expecting like a fighting move to help deal with Kecleon here. Or maybe like a ground type move. So I think... You're, that like I'm pretty safe to go Miss Magius, but uh, he goes seed bomb and gets a crit there and kills me. I'm not sure if the crit mattered or not, but not, nevertheless, like a pretty decent read. So we're already down, or we're tied rather, uh, five to five here. So and I like my switch ins to to Ursaring here are pretty eh. So I'm gonna go Arcanine this time. Flare Blitz is guaranteed to kill. So I'm just going to go for chip damage. That does 43%. So I know that it's not defensively invested now because that was doing significantly less uh, when I was trying out before. So I'm guessing it's HP. We're going to take a little chip damage, go down to 54%. I got to swap back into Kecleon here. And he's going to pop off a Surf. At this point, I think it's a really good opportunity for me to get up my rocks. So I'm going to tank Hidden Power Psychic here, which was an interesting bring. Uh, I'm going to get up my rocks. I know I'm in really good shape. Shadow Ball comes out. I'm going to tank that. We're going to go to Ghost. I can recover. I know that I can live another hit here, so I'm just going to recover again. And at this point, I kind of want to be a little bit more proactive with how I'm dealing with Vaporeon. So I'm going to swap into Empoleon here to soak this Shadow Ball. Thankfully, we don't get a special defense drop. If he wants to stay in, it's fine. Uh, we are going to go for Iron Defense here. Uh, against the Ursa Ring, I believe that I chose to kind of roll the dice here and see what we could do and go for a second Iron Defense. So now we've offset a lot of the Ursa Ring's damage and we just kind of want to let the burn do the do the work for us to get some of that chip damage in. I'm going to go for a rest. And uh, out comes Ampharos. Um, you'll notice a trend with this Empoleon. 
uh, eventually. Uh, we go for another iron defense, so we're like very tanky. Flash cannon does almost nothing. The T-bolt is more damage than I'm okay with. Um, so we're going to wake up. I'm going to go for a rest again, just on the off chance that he wants to swap out. T-bolt comes out here. And at this point, I believe that I have to switch here into Kecleon. T-bolt does 34% damage, which is very, very nice. Uh, Hidden Power is going to take me... Hidden Power Fire, which is really interesting. Maybe to deal with Tang Growth. Um, he's going to Power Gem me, but you see that this thing's Special Defense is kind of just off the chain. Tried to go for a Confusion there, and Focus Blast is going to knock me out. I think that... I, I didn't exactly do the Calc, but I figured that I would be fine. So I don't know if this was a high roll or not, but we're losing Kecleon. But at this point in the game, I think that it's like relatively okay. Um, we got our rocks up. We got some chip damage in on some stuff. So I'm pretty happy with the way it performed for the most part. We're going to go Electrode. I'm going to fire off a Mirror Coat here just to be safe. But Ursaring comes in here. I know that I'm going to be faster than it. So I'm just going to go for a T-Bolt and Ursaring goes down here. Frostless comes out here. I know that I can't die to this thing. So I'm just going to fire off Thunderbolt again. It's going to go for a Hail. I assume that this is probably the... Um, bright powder snow cloak set that he ran last week um fortunately for me he's gonna swap out here t-bolt's gonna do a little bit to dragonair and i will say dragonair is surprisingly tanky um i go for a thunder wave there uh, he's got a chesto bear he does have um shed skin but at the same time i don't really know what this thing is meant to do yet i find this a good opportunity to go into bronze on here that hail chip damage is proving to be pretty significant. We tank that, 41% damage. And at this point, I figured that we could probably get a kill off. This roll is like pretty decent for me if he's like not super, super bulky. But we do find out that he's got some investment in defense. And Flamethrower is unfortunately going to take Bronzong out. And so for the second week in a row, our Bronzong doesn't get to pop off. But it is what it is. Um, we're going to go Electrode here, and this was a big misplay on my part. I will say that like, I was pretty happy with the way I played the game for the most part, but this was definitely not the play here. Um, I should have just gone back into Empoleon here because I, I totally forgot that Trick Room was still up. So I was thinking maybe I could just like threaten him to do a double here, but um, I'm just going to go into Empoleon. He's going to rest, um, and now we're going to get into kind of just like a little bit of a stall battle. It gets the Shed Skin, but um, this thing it really isn't doing a whole lot to me and at this point Empoleon feels like sleep talk is just rest over and over and over again uh, we're gonna rest for the second turn in a row which is unfortunate uh, flash cannon is doing like some pretty meaningful chip damage here um, flamethrower is gonna take me down a little bit further I'm gonna wake up and go back to sleep so we're gonna get that HP back flamethrower is coming out again at this point Empoleon is like decent but it's not super necessary to winning Electrode's kind of my key to victory at this point, so we're just going to kind of play this back and forth. Um, and eventually, he's just going to go Ampharos. We're going to take some uh, chip damage there with uh, the Stealth Rocks, a little bit more with Flash Cannon. At this point, I feel like um, I also misplayed here because I realized that I was faster. I should have just gone for Flash Cannon, all things considered, because getting that chip damage means that Thunderbolt from um, Electrode's a guaranteed kill. But now... Um, my Thunderbolt roll, assuming the set that he is, just based off the damage that he was doing, um, only does like 22% max damage. So I have to roll the dice here and hope he hits me with like exactly like Focus Blast or something. And we're going to get a Mirror Coat off here. So Dragonair comes back in. And this is the point in the game where things get a little risque. So... Um, in this situation, I need to get rid of Dragonair, and I feel like he knows he can take damage from me, so he's probably going to feel pretty secure here. Um, so I choose to roll the dice, even though he's still got a ghost type on his team, and I just go for explosion. And fortunately, he stays in. We're going to go back into Arcanine. Vaporeon comes out here, and um, I am kind of writing this game off as kind of like, okay, well, there it is. I can't do enough damage with Thunder Fang, so I basically need to rely on, like, paralyzing him. Um, and we're going to fire off Thunder Fang, and we get a critical hit. So Vaporeon's going to go down. I did not update my layout. Sorry. Uh, there we go. And there we go. And Electrode is also done, too. Um, Frostlass comes out here, but he's four times weak, 
to the stealth rocks or he's weak to the stealth rocks and we're gonna steal this one so I asked him after the game I was like what was the investment on the Vaporeon turns out that it was like max HP so that Thunder Fang was doing about 50% so the crit 100% saved the game for us so it never feels good winning on a crit like that uh, it definitely felt like I did not play nearly as well as he did um, and he 100% deserved the win but sometimes you know in the world of Pokemon crazy things can happen um, so we're going to pick up a very narrow 1-0 victory here so a couple things uh, GG's to Winglings it was a really fun game uh, the games this season have been very very close and very very fun so far um, I wish him the best of the luck in the weeks to come he's sitting in a pretty good spot in his division right now um, as are we now, we're, we moved to 3-1, and one and we're sitting in second place currently. Our bumbling Bidoofs in our division are taking on the Minnesota Mamoswines this week, so we'll be rooting for Josh to kind of knock Hooper down a peg. Sorry, Hoop. Um, but let's go ahead and check out real fast um, who our opponent is for the next week. I believe we are running into maybe Hooper in the next week after this. Uh, yeah, so we have our last divisional game against Bumbling Bados afterwards. My schedule has been pretty unkind. <laughs> um, but it's been a lot of fun. Uh, very, very competitive. So um, I don't really have much else to say other than thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Arcanine, you're a beast. Uh, we're probably going to look at maybe making one or two changes to the team for the next week. And uh, we'll see what we can do. But until then, like I said, appreciate all the support. And uh, go Moltres.